another video and thank you so much for being here. I appreciate your time. What I wanted to show you today is what I'm planning to do with my Tolumnia Pink Brisht. She looks amazing. She has three spikes. She's got plenty of fans, but I am still going to be cutting the blooms off prematurely. And that's what I want to talk to you about. The reasoning why, what is behind the fact that I'm going to stop the blooming at this point in time, knowing full well that Tolumnia spikes can also branch, which could prolong the blooming, more pleasure, more color during what is my time of the year, winter. Well, heading into winter, we're not quite there yet. Four more weeks and it will be winter, but why would I want to forfeit extra color during those months? Well, we're looking at the orchid from a distance. You can see that she's doing well. She's got plenty of structures. There's no real apparent reason, no room for concern. The thing is, we can't just assume that the orchid is doing well because she's blooming. It doesn't mean the orchid is stressed because she's blooming, but it could be that she could become stressed and deplete herself because she is blooming. And those are the odds we need to weigh out in order to make sure that our orchid actually survives and comes through and grows even stronger so that she will continue blooming. And my thought process about cutting these spikes prematurely is because I want her to maintain her strength so that she can survive any stress factors that are up ahead the coming months with regards to too cold, not being able to fertilize consistently because the temperatures are too low. And in those conditions, my Tolumnias pretty much shut down. Tolumnias are not a resting type orchid. They don't go into dormancy. They don't rest. They are continuous growers unless the conditions become unfavorable. And then bit by bit, they will try to conserve energy by not doing anything. The minimum amount that they can do in order to survive. The word energy is paramount here because all these spikes, the possibility of branching with more blooms, they are a massive energy drain source, so to speak, and I need to get rid of them in order to ensure the health and continuity of my Tolumnia. So I'm going to get you in a little bit closer to the plant and show you things I'm looking at where I'm thinking, yeah, those spikes have got to go. Now, just directing your attention to the growths that are doing really well, and that would be this one with two spikes. The fan behind it is still looking nice and plump as well. And as per usual, the older the fans get, the more tatty they start to look, and eventually they will die off. But even the back fan right here, the one that is blooming with a single spike, you see, mm, it is looking rather desiccated. That is from a single spike. The leaves aren't as plump as the leaves in the front here. And even the leaves in the front here aren't as plump as they should be, as they could be. And that is for me the sign the spikes have got to go. So unfortunately, we are going to do the harakiri on these tolumnia blooms. But if you want to stick around, I'm going to try something again this time around. We're going to try and save the blooms. For the sake of the orchid, this is the main port of call. And I have another example I want to show you just so that, you know, we don't stick with one. There are other examples in my collection currently happening. And let's move on to those. I will put these Tolumnia spikes into water just because I've got plans for them, which I will show you in the next phase of the video. Here I have a cutie. Oh my goodness, these blooms only just opened. This is my firm Dalmatian. Tiny little blooms, super cute. And you can see that there's a lot of fans right here that are teeny tiny and there's one in spike as well. This orchid has had a little bit of a scale issue throughout the summer, which I've been trying to treat. And I don't want this tiny little fan to bloom because you can see the size of the fan where there is a spike coming out. This is the potential of the actual size of the fans of this orchid. Not as large as the pink brisht, but it isn't about size, it's about vigor. This orchid in the winter of 21-22 wanted to grow vigorously, but the conditions weren't very favorable, so all the fans were rather small. Add to that, she had a little bit of scale, which all adds to the stress factor of the orchid. 
and I'm going to be removing this spike right here, although I have to say kudos to the little orchid for even trying, because I want to see if those little dots, I can, I can see, I'm not sure if they show on camera, but if those little dots there are scale. With my naked eye, sometimes spotting, I can confuse it for scale or just part of the structure of the orchid. Meanwhile, I'm also going to be removing this spike because I have dedicated the blooms. I can now let my orchid rest. And in between every cut, we sterilize with alcohol, letting the cutting tools evaporate completely dry out because that is the sterilizing process. Just spraying alcohol on a tool will not sterilize it. Let it completely evaporate before using. Righty-ho, we have passed the evaporation part. It's all dry and we're ready to just cut this spike off and have a closer look. Because if there's scale there, then we are going to do another treatment. Sometimes these tiny little tulumnias can just have leaf bracts. But you know, it's better to double check. Not saying you have to cut your spike to check, but in this case, as we are trying to preserve our tulumnia as well, might as well look. I still cannot 100% determine whether that was scale or not. Doesn't really matter. The spike is off. We're going to let the tulumnia rest. Another important thing, if I were to cut off the spike in the back here, which I'm not going to do, it's important to wait for the buds to separate from the spike before cutting it. Otherwise, the orchid may, depending on her characteristics, push out another spike which also is high, high energy consumption. You want to avoid that. So in a way, we have to kind of let the orchid get to a certain stage in the spike's development in order to save her and then cut the spike off without risking her sending another spike out. Tolumnias in their characteristics do not actually do that. Phalaenopsis would. So it's just a rule of thumb that I apply in my collection if I'm going to stop an orchid from blooming, I will always, always wait until the buds separate from the spike because by that time, the hormones in the orchid have already registered. They're going to bloom. They've moved on to the next phase of their growing cycle. Now let's cut the second spike. The reason I've just watered my orchid is because I'm going to spray her down with some garlic alcohol just to do a preventative measure to help her along. I didn't sterilize my cutting tools in this process because it's the same orchid. Very, very pretty. And let's have a look. Because scale can also hide on the back of the blooms. Look at this. These little buggers were not there yesterday. Look at this. So, maybe the first spike did not have scale on it, but my suspicions were correct. They're trying again. So, we have nipped this threat in the bud, so to speak, with a double whammy. We're protecting the orchid from the excess of energy. We've also removed the little baby scale. And I was going to use these blooms for a little project. I'll have to rethink whether I'm going to do that or not because I don't want scale in that project. They are so icky looking once you see them up close. On a tiny, tiny little orchid like this, this could be the death of her. Now we've wet the roots. The reason I like to pre-moisten my roots before I spray garlic alcohol on them is because they are also tiny. And there is a desiccation effect when the alcohol hits that's all part and parcel of the kill factor. And that desiccation could also be, you know, kick into effect when it hits the velamen. So when it comes to really fine rooted orchids like this little tolumnia, I like to pre-moisten the velamen just so that the evaporation and the desiccation of alcohol doesn't immediately take the roots out that are growing. Should there be a possible danger of that happening? We'll give this little fan some as well. And we'll just give a little bit of a spray onto the spike that we would like to have bloom out. Just because I do want to dedicate these blooms to one of you in the blooms for you video. 
but you can see how desiccated this spike is. If I wasn't doing the Blooms for You series, this spike would be coming off right now, but she's close to blooming. I'm going to risk it. But this is a clear sign. This orchid should not be allowed to bloom. Just double checking if that's scale. This is just terrible, terrible. This could be that this side of the orchid is going to fail. However, I still have nice structures here from the spike we cut off prematurely. I will be definitely very vigilant about what the progress is right there. Once they bloom, I dedicate them and that spike is coming off immediately as well. Let me show you another example if you're so inclined before we move on to the second part of this video. Moving on to the Tolumnia brown spots. I want to point out that as you are working in the same genus, always remember that not all orchids, even in the same genus, are the same. So you can see that here we have some stress factors, but they are all on old fans. In the camera, the orchid looks a little bit more yellow than she is in real life. So color is also what I look for as I let an orchid bloom out, in this case, my Tolumnia. Now, I wonder if you can see how in the back here, maybe the contrast isn't as much as I have here in my natural light. This is drying out. This is desiccating up here. And we have some wrinkly, funky things going on here. The center part here is about the scale. This is cold damage, lack of humidity. All these kinds of factors could have played a part in those leaf tips desiccating. The thing is though, I'm looking at the fact that they are on older fans. So I'm not concerned about that. Again, Tolumnia, older fans, they do only have a limited lifespan. My focus is on what is going on with the growing points. This is the important part of the orchid, and it is the part that will guarantee its continuation in life or its demise. If we are not careful with how the spikes are affecting the overall health of the leads. Now, the spikes are looking pretty good. Clearly, they've got plenty of energy for now. I've still got nice looking leaves. I'm not concerned about the fact that they are already looking a little bit stressed. Sorry, that's the old leaf right here, looking a little bit stressed. Could be plumper. The V shape of the leaf could be a little bit wider. So these are the factors I'm looking at. The same here, this spike right here, we've got a nice growth, but it's not as big as this one which also shouldn't necessarily be a problem because in some orchids, one lead is always the more dominant as opposed to the other. This spike is looking fine. We've got plenty of buds. However, I'm also seeing spotting right up here, which is scale. At least this spike is big and fat enough. I can see them, but add to that, I do want to dedicate these blooms. So I'm playing a little bit of a gamble, a little bit of a game here as to whether I should let these bloom out or not, but I won't let her go to the point of no return. She has roots, which is awesome. With that, I feel she can absorb water. So there is a bit of a balance there as well. Can they absorb water? And if so, then you can gamble and let the spike develop. But treating the pest immediately is paramount or else that's not gonna work. All the precautions, all the observations of all the symptoms, it's not going to be good enough if we don't treat for pests. I can't quite confirm if that was scale or not. Whatever it was, it's off. Same up here. I believe this is definitely scale. Sorry, it just blew off. But anyway, you get my point. I thought it might be interesting to explain my decision-making process as to why I let some bloom and others I don't let bloom. But let's go inside. I have a Cattleya as an example, if you would like to see why I'm gonna take that bloom off prematurely, and then we'll move on to the second part of this video. This orchid is going to be relieved of the stress and the energy consumption of this bloom because she is stressed. You can see how the pseudobulbs right here are a little bit desiccated, too desiccated for my liking. Yes, golden cellar pseudobulbs that are a little bit older will always have some ridges. They don't stay plump for the duration of their lifespan, but I don't like how desiccated they already are. 
and because of the conditions that we are going to be facing, this orchid has done her duty, the bloom has been dedicated, and now we're going to relieve her of it and let her recover. Besides, she's got Fusarium, she's living with it for the time being, any stress I put on her could actually potentially trigger the Fusarium to become stronger and we might lose her. But I do have plans for these beauties. I would like to try to preserve them again. And with that, I'm going to be using dry gel, desiccating, dehydrating gel that you can see in the corner. We're gonna give this project another go. Just because I tried it in 2020 and there were some blooms that had somewhat failed because they were already old, I'm gonna try it again with my golden cellar. So what I wanna do here is fill a layer down at the bottom. Ideally, if you're interested in doing this, trying it out for yourself, ideally you wanna do it in one of the driest areas in your home because the purpose of this material is to suck up all the moisture and if you're doing it in a high humidity environment, <laughs> yep, you guessed it it's going to suck up your humidity. And then we're gonna cut the bloom as close to or as far back from the stem as the size of container that you have. So I like to have it as close to because I'm hoping that one day I'm going to find shadow boxes where I can preserve more of my blooms and make little displays. But do you think I can find shadow boxes in Spain? no dice so far. Now, ideally you want to be working with super fresh blooms and that is why I probably cannot use my little Dalmatian firm white because of that scale. I don't know if the petals have anything on it and I don't want to have scale in a display should I ever find shadow boxes. I'm just double checking the back of my pink brish blooms in case I was tricked and didn't see them out there but they're all nice and clean. We don't have the same effect as we had on the firm Dalmatian. So what I mean about getting a fresh bloom, it makes the whole process much more appealing as the drying agent pulls the water out of the cell structures. So my pink brish blooms are relatively aged already. I'm not sure how well we're gonna be preserving my colors here, but what I want to actually to try and do is take a spike and leave it somewhat complete. Normally you might you want to be doing this maybe bloom by bloom and I've tried it before that works very well. I've just never tried an entire spike and then because of the way it dries what you want to do as well is put the spike into the desiccating material of choice. There's plenty of different ones out there but you want to put the blooms in such a way that you will find them once they've desiccated and dried out and hold their shape, so to speak. That is why I have my Cattleya upright. I was hoping for a smaller container, but you need to get all the material right up into every single structure so that it all dries out properly. Now, you don't necessarily want to be mixing different structured size blooms either because everything is gonna dry out and desiccate at a different pace. You see, <laughs> Tulumia blooms, you can have these ready in four days maybe, whereas the Cattleya bloom might take five to six days. But seeing as it's just an experiment and also seeing as I may be able just, you know, individually pull out the little blooms of the Tulumia, I'm gonna be doing it in one container. Saves me a little bit of time and precious real estate. I'm just gonna be putting individual blooms around the Cattleya bloom. There we go, that looks pretty already. Now, let's get the rest of it and what we have to do is very carefully, depending on how delicate your blooms are, I find that Lelia purpurata blooms are already a very tissued, structured bloom, but you have to be mindful of the texture of your bloom, how delicate they are, and then you have to really start with ensuring that these desiccating crystals will actually reach every nook and cranny that you have in your bloom. 
that includes underneath because if they overlap like that the material doesn't get in between and then you may have yourself some hindrance in even desiccation there we go i hope all this isn't shot and i'm impressed with ciliano for staying quiet now we need to we need to get into the nose there and just gently put some and fill in the blanks and you see the point here is to preserve color not squash the bloom but maintain its shape and mainly the color if i will just not use the semi hydro holes that would be awesome there we go the telumnias are pretty easy as light as this material may be be gentle if you're going to do this at home with your pour the more you use like sand the heavier it gets so you just want to be gently pouring it around adding layer after layer get underneath the curl of the top sepal as well Okay, we have gently poured everything over and now we can just fill up enough around the structure of every single bloom that we've put in and be generous about it. This project can be indefinite for all blooms in the orchid world and regular blooms as well. The only thing is you think that you buy yourself a huge, huge container, it doesn't go a very, very long way. So it's like one project after the other, and then you have to make the decision as well. Do you want the blooms on your orchid, or do you want to have them for longevity? But I thought it would be nice, seeing as we're taking off premature blooms anyway, that would have looked nice on the orchid for a long time, to show you what I do when I sometimes get myself into a situation to preserve and protect the orchid, I do the same with the blooms and maybe it inspired you to think along the same lines then we cover it up and wait for the tulumnias maybe four days five days and that fleshy cattleya i'm for sure needs about six days if not a whole week and then you can take them out and put them into a shadow box with a hot glue gun so that then they can become gifts that's the click i was waiting for and that is my project for the day. I hope that it was helpful with some of the tips that I'm looking for in order to have my blooms on the orchid or when it is time to take them off just to preserve the orchid to make sure she's going to be safe. If, of course, you're growing in a controlled environment and you're not dependent on climate influences, then none of this would apply to you. Unless, of course, you have a similar situation in your controlled environment and your orchids are showing signs of stress. I hope that this was helpful. Thank you so very, very much for watching. Have yourselves a very beautiful day on one condition though, please, that you stay safe. Take care. Bye.